Hello and welcome to another episode of Breaking Bad Influence, the show that doesn't know what it wants to be anymore. One, two, two, one. Hello from Bad Influence. We're getting ready for a live performance from top band ASF. Yes, ASF, everyone's favourite answer to the question, who? We've also got a review of Super Bomberman 2 and Zed Wright has been locked in a hotel room with an exercise bike. But first... It's bonfire night on Saturday, so the question on everyone's lips is, as always, what will the weather be like? What an exciting country we live in. Well, if you've got a PC, you can now buy a software package that will let you do your own weather forecasts. Although, it's primarily aimed at schools and colleges because it costs over £1,000. But, it does come with a nifty little add-on. Yep, we've reached this level of excitement, weather forecasting. Why just watch the weather forecast when you can spend a grand to have a guess yourself? OK, so that's the satellite sorted, but weather forecasting is a very complicated business. However, who better to guide us through it than the Michelle Pfeiffer of the weather forecasting world, Sean Lloyd. Hi. Ooh, sleeves are rolled up, Andy's getting flirty. Check out my buff forearm, Sean. I've been working out. Difference being, we use other forecasting tools as well, radar, detailed info from the weather stations. Uh, the interesting thing about this is this infrared information, which, of course, being dark outside at night is an advantage to use it. You can see the Earth's curvature there, yeah. and then a great big dirty swirl of cloud. Don't say great big dirty swirl of cloud in front of Andy right now. He's likely to go off like a rocket. Well, Violet was talking about the two other satellites, and you can look at pictures of all over the world. You can, you? yes. So you can talk us through some of those. Well, we've got some American pictures here, and look at that finger of cloud stretching all the way across the states, virtually splitting it in two. Sean, you're just doing this on purpose now. That's interesting for us at the moment, because you remember that freak thunderstorm earlier in the week, and you can make out the Nile there, so it's great we can sort of zoom in on all these places of interest for us. These are just stills. I mean, when you do the weather, you always say, let's have a look at the satellite sequence. Oh, so absolutely. Look, you can't even control these legs anymore. Is, you can see Okay, the million dollar question, the weather for bonfire night will be what? <laughs> well, I'm keeping a careful eye on this, it's looking slightly dodgy. Uh, I'll stake the fact it's going to be fairly wet in the east. Yeah. Basically, the further west you go, the drier it's likely to be. Northern Ireland ought to be dry for bonfire So night. that's the place for a good bonfire yeah, night, it is Northern Ireland. So, uh, have you got any plans for bonfire night, Sean? Just, you know, it's, it's going to be quite quite dry over in Ireland on bonfire night. And I know this lovely little hotel right down by the coast, so if you're not doing anything, I thought maybe you and you and me... No, 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 that, that, that's fine. I mean, I've got a pretty busy schedule here on Bad Influence. Vivian Westwood? No, 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 no. Oh, uh, Marty? No, no. no. Nemrude's been on the rob in TK Maxx. <laughs> ah, hello, Furtless. <laughs> As bonfire night approaches, you're probably thinking, oh, must choose a suitable anorak. Now, I've been looking through my collection, and I've chosen this one. This is my favourite anorak of all time, because it's voice activated. I'll show you. <laughs> right arm, up. <laughs> Stop. Hey! Down! Whoa, 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 whoa! Up, 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 up! Stop! Oh, you have to be really careful with your commands, Furtlers. I am 9,000% sure he's done this skit before. Series 1, somewhere. He's definitely done this before. Someone tell me in the comments which one it was, because I can't be bothered to look. Like crazy! Whoa, not you! Whoa, whoa! Down! Down! Oh, oh. <sighs> it's freezing out there. Still, a wise decision not to borrow one of Nam's anoraks. Yeah, never a good idea to contaminate police evidence. Anyway, let's have a look at Bomberman 2, shall we? Five out of five across the board. Put it in the bank. This is one of the most enjoyable games ever devised. It's hard to improve upon perfection, but I think this one's even better than the first Bomberman game. Oh, yes. If our very own ex-goth loves it, then you know it's on the right track. It's a lot bigger than the first game, as the screen scrolls on many levels. It's also a lot harder. This is the battle mode, which is really the main point of Super Bomberman, as you can play against your friends. It's really sociable. Really sociable? Clearly you're not playing the game with the right people. It's brilliantly addictive. If you haven't got the first one, you must get this. But you said it's better than the first one, so even if you do have the first one, surely this is better? And therefore you should get it? The beauty of this game is you can just pick it up and play, and you'll never get bored of it because no two games are the same. Everyone loves the Bomberman games. They're fast, colourful and brilliant fun to play. Okay, sounds good. Also, I have no idea who this last person is. I've literally never seen her before, so I'm assuming they were running out of reviews. Five out of five, come on. And the scores for Super Bomberman 2, both the boys and the girls, gave it an explosive four out of five. Why? Why? There was not a bad word said about this game. Everyone talked about how great it is. 
What dock the points? Nothing. Nothing bad was said. Just as good as Dragon. Piss off. Super Bomberman 2, a great game, and had it been an original, it would have got 5 out of 5. But because it's a sequel, our panel decided to mark it down by 1 and give it 4 out of 5. You've already specified that's not the point of the scores anymore, Andy. You spent at least two 10-minute segments in this series explaining that points were now specifically focused on gameplay only. How good they were to play. How can you mark a game down on gameplay because it's a sequel? Are you telling me that Street Fighter 2 is worse than the original Street Fighter? This system is broken. If you disagree, you're very welcome to drop us a line and let us know what you think. In fact, we're always happy to receive your letters about the programme. And this year, apart from the regular mail, we've also been receiving electronic mail. We're on the CompuServe system, and like all mailing systems, we have an address. What the fuck is that email address? I know the internet is in its infancy here, but come on, come on. Ours is really catchy. It goes as follows. One double O three O two dot. 1207 at sign compuserve.com and our PC has got a modem built in now a modem is the bit of kit that allows you to send and receive characters down the telephone line I'm live on the system at the moment and I've just been calling up some of the letters that we received recently this has come from Pete Davidson who writes hi we're just writing to say how much we enjoy about influence we think it's a hundred times better than games master yes that seems like a genuine email from a real person who doesn't work in the bad influence studio in some capacity keep making it as good as you are doing so all the best Pete Davidson and Mike Airy, thank you for that, guys. You don't have to use this system for just mail, though. You can access whole libraries of information. You can book theatre tickets, airline tickets, holidays. You can even chat to people live all the way around the world. In fact, a Z right now reports from America. The so-called information superhighway is eventually going to affect us all. Will it shite? The latest buzz phrase over here is the information superhighway. Information superhighway. It's nothing to do with traffic signals and freeway madness. It's the idea that every citizen will one day have access to a massive electronic data bank. It brings together three bits of existing technology and uses the plus points of them all. First, the TV. A lot of American homes are on cable, and the cable network can handle massive amounts of data, hundreds of TV channels. But you can't talk back to the TV. Wait, I don't know what his point is here. Can we talk back to the TV now that we have the internet? Have I been doing TV wrong? It's a one-way street. Man, I get it. Highways. Very good. You don't have to show me footage of one every 10 seconds. Next, the telephone. The plus point of the telephone is that it's two-way. Messages can come into the house and go out from the house. But the telephone wires can only cope with a very small amount of information. And finally, the computer. The computer is a very powerful way to store and organize information. Bring them all together, and you've got yourself the beginnings of the information superhighway. Information superhighway. It means that you'll never have to leave your bedroom ever again. You'll have access to information on any subject under the sun. All sorts of services will be on offer, including home shopping. This is a system called In the Bag, and it's a virtual shopping mall. Okay, wait, what? Why is the internet better before it exists than it is now that it does exist? I want all websites to look like this. You can go into any virtual shop that you fancy. Once inside, you can select goods using a data glove and find out prices and other information. And to buy something, you simply drop it into your virtual shopping bag. Thank you, your credit card has been charged. What? No confirmation or anything. Just put it in the bag. We've taken the money, sunshine. Okay, I'll take it back. This version of shopping's horrific. Another vital service is called Video On Demand. Just like a video you get from the shop, you can fast forward, rewind, and pause at will. And best of all, you don't have to stop watching the vid to order some pizza to go with it. That is the worst selection of toppings. Four options. Four. The future looks awful. The system relies on massive supercomputers called digital video servers. They can store hundreds of videos and read them out independently to thousands of TVs. All right, that was quick. The information superhighway. Information superhighway. It also lets you play games on demand. This is the headquarters of Sega in America, and they're pioneering the technology that makes it possible to play remote Sonic. Once again, Sega leading the way with something barely anyone bothered with. Poor Sega. 
For a monthly fee, you can choose up to 50 hot games and play as much as you want. There's also a special test drive section that lets you try out new games before they hit the shops. The Information Superhighway. Information Superhighway. Will also let you make very high quality video phone calls. Z, who are you talking to? Not now, Mom. I'm busy. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking, why are you eating pizza in the middle of this information segment? It's rude. How does Z keep his sharp athletic figure if he never leaves his bedroom? The answer's over here. The world's first virtual exercise bike. There's a choice of courses from the complete Tour de France to this rather pleasant countryside. All gyms should be like this. I remember watching this segment at the time and was convinced that this would be it. Gyms would be like physical arcade places where all the exercises would be fun instead of a monotonous slog full of sweat and weird noises. There's various virtual opponents to race against, or you can link several machines together and race with your pals. There are even plans to connect virtual bikes to the information superhighway. This is Z-Rite for Band Influence, lying somewhere on the Information Superhighway. Information Superhighway. Okay, that's enough of that. It's time for Nam to give us a cheat that no one will ever want to use. You've been a very naughty anorak. Now stay and stop waving your arms about. Uh... Ah, hello, furlers. Uh, I've decided not to wear that anorak, but instead to wear this. It's very special indeed. Watch what happens when I turn it on. Uh, on. <laughs> off. On. Off. It's a shame he wasn't wearing an all-over bodysuit anorak of invisibility and it's very appropriate for this next cheat which is for alien breed on the amiga all you have to do is log on to the computer and then type in salman rushdie plays alien breed salman rushdie plays alien breed how many letters does he think are in that sentence and then when you start to play you'll be invisible hey brilliant it's not brilliant though is it it's not even a cheat Jimmy wasn't wearing an all-over bodysuit. Get... Jimmy wasn't wearing an all-over bodysuit. It's a shame he wasn't wearing an all-over bodysuit. It's a shame he wasn't wearing an all-over bodysuit. Body oh God, I, I made the same joke as Andy. I think I've watched so much bad influence that I've accidentally merged into his wavelength. I need to go and boil my body. I'll be back in a minute. This is Inferno, the latest space simulation game. It's a world of bizarre planets, asteroid fields, desolate space wrecks and psychotic space warriors. Not for the first time in a game, the entire fate of civilization rests on your shoulders, or should that be your mouse, as you defend the universe of Inferno from the evil wrecks on Empire. And there's a lot of good graphics and cinematic effects, but when you've finished the 700 missions, what else is so exciting about it? Well, the music, for one thing. It's the first time that music commissioned for a game has been released separately on a CD. It was written and performed by the legendary band ASF. The legendary band ASF. So why is it I've never heard of the band ASF before? Oh, oh I see why. They're not called ASF, they're called Alien Sex Fiend. I wonder why they keep abbreviating that here on this kids program, Bad Influence. And Chris from the band is with Violet now. Yep, I'm here with Mrs Fiend. So, where did you start? Well, we had a list of 17 songs, a different song for each of the scenarios in the game. Some of it was gameplay, where you'd be flying around planets, moons, in space. And some of it was theme tunes, one for the humans and one for the aliens. We've got a picture of the aliens yeah. here. This is all that we had to start with. This is the Emperor and this is his sidekick. They're green, actually. Green aliens, original. Okay, and we had to come up with a menacing theme tune for them. So something like... <laughs> Completely the wrong sound and no good at all, far too twee. Right, enough of that, it's news and previews time. True Lies is coming out, one of the only good film-to-game conversions at the time. 
Stargate is coming out, which is the opposite of that. And Vortex for the snares looks like every Super FX game ever made. And there's also a keyboard coming out and it costs 70 quid. And now for some more games reviews. Super Stardust review is up next. It's a nice looking action packed game, but the fancy graphics can't hide the rather thin gameplay. There are four tunnel sequences, and although they look spectacular, they're a real dog to play. Go out and buy a public domain game for a pound. Ouch, Lakesh. I've never played Super Stardust, but I seem to remember it's a pretty popular game, and it also got a fairly recent sequel. I think this is really stupid. You just shoot rocks. It's just stupid. That's the kind of insightful games journalism I expect from bad influence reviews. I really like this. It's asteroids in an extra dimension. This will definitely appeal to Jutimate fans. Well, he seems a bit more on the ball. Gold star for him. No idea what the scores are going to be for this. I've given up guessing. Super Stardust is obviously a game you either love or hate. After fierce debate, the scores averaged out at 3 out of 5 from both the boys and the girls. Well, that's the most contentious 3 out of 5 I think we'll see. It's a 3 that says you will either love this or hate this, not a 3 that says this game is just okay. Once again, the point system is useless. Next up, it's that Shaquille O'Neal fighting game, and right, this just looks shit. Shaq Fu, what a stupid idea. It's a really good effort uh, to beat him up. A good effort? That's the kind of thing your mum would say when you come last in school sports day. The only problem is the sprites are a bit too small. In the duel part, you don't have to play as Shaq, you can play as one of the other characters. I'm playing Voodoo the Woman against Auroch. Each character has their own two special moves. Mine's to turn into a wolf. Brilliant, got it. Also, each character has a provoking move. Mine laughs in the face like that. This is the bit called the story. This is the bit called the story. <laughs> I've no idea why I find that so funny. It's just a very odd way of introducing it. In the story, you have to play Shaq. He's not actually a very good character. I'd rather play one of the others. This game should give the other beat-em-ups a run for their money. Gives other beat-em-ups a run for their money? Wow. It's a great game. It's a great game. What a waste. It's got all these fantastic special moves, but you need brilliant eyesight to see them. Okay, well, not massively critical there, even from the normal kid. It seems that Shaq Fu has plenty of martial, but perhaps not quite enough art. It gets fours all round. Four each. No, 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 no. Same as Super Street Fighter 2. The same as my beloved dragon. No, 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 no. I finally decided to wear this anorak. I simply do not care anymore now. Last week's prize was something that's probably massively overrated, and this week's prize is a SNES with Super Bomberman 2, which apparently isn't as good as the first one because it's a sequel, even though everyone thinks it's better than the first one. And then it's time for Alien Sex Fiend to be drowned out by fireworks for a bit. <laughs> So, in summary then, no, no, and... See you next time for another episode of this shit.